Hello and welcome back to another student life video. In this video, I'm gonna be taking you guys through my life in eight songs. We're gonna kick things off with what I think is my all time favorite song, and that is Sympathy for the Devil by the Rolling Stones. Everything about this song is just good. I first heard it when I was like maybe seven or eight and I didn't get the lyrics at all. It essentially references a lot of historical events and is spoken in first person from the point of view of the devil. It's a bit complicated, but as I got older, I understood just how clever the lyrics were. And more than that, the music itself is great. It starts off with like Congo drums and then it keeps layering up different instruments until you have what is an iconic song and I personally think one of the Stones' absolute best. This will be An Everlasting Love by Natalie Cole. The reason I love this song is because it plays in the end credits of um, one of my all-time favourite childhood movies which is The Parent Trap. I'm talking about the 1998, I think, version with Lindsay Lohan where she single-handedly plays twins. I was obsessed with that movie when I was younger. I used to watch it every time it was on TV. Uh, it was the best thing ever to me. And this song would play in the end credits and I would proper jam out to it and absolutely loved it. And when I researched who Natalie Cole is, it turns out she's Nat King Cole's daughter. And if you don't know who Nat King Cole is, I highly suggest you look him up and listen to his music because he has one of the best voices ever. And this song always reminds me of what really got me listening to him because I found him through his daughter. Feeling Good by Nina Simone. Now, no list is complete without Nina Simone, to be fair. She has one of the most distinctive voices, I think, of any singer ever. I know people who don't know who Nina Simone is and it hurts my heart every single time. This song is probably one of her most popular. Her voice just transcends me to a different place. Every time I hear this song, it makes me happy. Like it's one of those songs that just, no matter what I'm doing, as soon as I hear those first notes of her singing, just calms me, just soothes me. And again, it's another one that I used to hear when I was growing up a lot. My mum used to play it. And so I think for me, it just reminds me of my childhood. Famous Last Words by My Chemical Romance. My Chemical Romance sum up pretty much my entire teenage years. You know, a little bit emo, really rocking out hard. This song especially I was obsessed with. In fact, everything off of their The Black Parade album was really what defined my early teenage years. For those of you not familiar with My Chemical Romance, they're big on concept albums. So all of their albums usually revolve around some sort of character. And the album that this is off of is called The Black Parade. And it heav heavily focuses on the theme of death and like, you know, the afterlife and what happens when you die. This is the last track on the album. And it's just such a hopeful message. And I think it's why I always love the band. It's something about this song that is about resilience and about persevering through all adversity that you're going to face and all the hard times. And it's about truly living your life. And I think when I was a teenager, I was just really screaming it from the rooftops because what, what better a message to sort of take home and to implement into your own life than just living life to the fullest. I Know Alone by Hyam. This song is very new and I'm talking like it only came out a month ago. I have loved Hyam from their first album, but this song especially sort of signifies like adulthood for me. It's this idea that you can feel alone and you can be alone. And it's about, you know, accepting that at certain points in your time, uh, in your life, sorry. And knowing that that's okay for a while. And I feel like 
everyone's felt alone at some point or other in their life but it's how you move on from that and it's what you do to you know change that if you want to change that and it also sort of picks up on a lot of self-destructive behaviors that you might have like that you're putting yourself in a situation where you are alone and how you can change that and everything like that and I just when I first heard the song it really hit home and I think that's why it's definitely got to be up on here even though it's so new. Lost by Dermot Kennedy. So this song is a really emotional one for me. Dermot Kennedy's voice is very raspy and raw and when he sings, he sings with so much emotion that you can't help but feel emotion as well. Lost is about those people in your life that that keep you up, that hold you up no matter what you're going through, especially during those hard times. Um, the chorus as well is amazing and it talks about how you can see someone in such a positive light and they cannot see themselves in that, that same way, even though you think they're like the best human being ever. It's just really one of those songs for me that puts everything in perspective and like gets me to reflect on the relationships that I have with other people. 26 by Paramore. This is another one that really defines my late teenage years. This album came out in uh, 2017. It's from their album After Laughter. And that whole album was like a big reinvention for the band and I had followed them since I was very very young and so I felt like it was a big reinvention for me as well and then I heard this song and it's called 26. It is essentially about holding on to your dreams and your hopes and following them through no matter what anyone says and no matter what anyone thinks about them you know, making sure you have that faith in yourself and that determination and belief that you can keep going even when people are telling you that you shouldn't or that you can't. And last but not least, Strange Fruit by Billie Holiday. Billie Holiday has a very unique and distinctive voice. This song is from the 1930s and it is essentially about lynching and um, the treatment of black people during that time. I came across this song by complete accident. From the first eerie note, I knew this was gonna be something completely different than I had ever heard. And then she starts singing. Her voice is so special. It's something unlike anyone else I have ever heard. And this song in particular, I can't listen to it much because it really does put a pit in my stomach every single time. It was such a bold song to be making in the 1930s as well because she was criticizing everything that they were doing, everything that they had done. I just, the song is so haunting, but it has to have a place on this list. This was actually a very interesting sort of video to prepare for because I had to go through essentially my life and figure out how music has played a role in it and how I've used music to help me or to guide me. I'm intrigued to know what people think of my music taste because I think it's a bit all over the place. If you guys liked this video, please make sure to subscribe to the Student Life YouTube channel. And also, why don't you give us a follow on all of our social medias at UOL Student Life.